Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. This is St. Louis Public Radio. It's Monday, May 3rd. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. Every spring, mushroom hunters head outside to look for an elusive fungus. The appeal for people to go out and hunt morel mushrooms is the fantastic taste of them. There's nothing that tastes as earthy and peanutty as these morel mushrooms. We'll find out more about searching for morels in just a few minutes. St. Louis City and County are easing coronavirus-related restrictions on restaurants. They can operate at full capacity starting today. Capacities had been limited to 50 percent. County Executive Sam Page says it's possible to safely relax restrictions because COVID-19 cases have stabilized in the region and vaccines are widely available. This is a guidance that we're getting from our public health experts in our departments of public health in the city and in the county. And it's that advice that has guided us throughout this pandemic. Under the new public health orders, restaurants must space tables at least six feet apart indoors. Diners will be required to wear masks unless they are eating or drinking. Illinois' coronavirus death toll surpassed 22,000 people over the weekend as the state's vaccination rate continues to drop. Hannah Meisel has more. Illinois reached a peak in the average number of vaccinations given per day on April 12th. That was the first day vaccines were open to everyone 16 and over in Illinois, except for the city of Chicago. But since then, the average number of COVID shots given per day statewide has dropped 37 percent. Governor J.B. Pritzker says Illinois' vaccine uptake numbers mirror a national trend. There are just fewer people that are seeking it out. That isn't to say that there aren't people who still desire to get vaccinated. The governor says the state's Department of Public Health is trying to reach Illinoisans via mobile vaccine operations and incentivizing people to get shots with discounts from businesses. I'm Hannah Meisel. The declining vaccination rate in Illinois could be a reason St. Clair County is closing a mass vaccination clinic at the Belle Claire Fairgrounds in Belleville. It's expected to shut down May 30th. The Belleville News Democrat reports a direct reason is not being given for the decision, but county officials admit demand for vaccines has dropped. Health officials at the fairgrounds have been giving the Pfizer two-dose vaccine. Give STL Day, the annual 24-hour donation drive for St. Louis nonprofits, is especially critical this year. Officials with the St. Louis Community Foundation say the nonprofit sector has been stretched thin by the pandemic. This year's event will allow people to give to 900 nonprofits through an online platform. Foundation President Amelia Bond says Give STL Day is especially important for newer nonprofits. One of the most valuable aspects is 30% of the gifts they receive from donors on Give STL Day are new to them. They didn't even have them on their donor list. That's invaluable for an organization. Bond says last year's event saw a big increase in donations as people looked for ways to give during the pandemic. Residents from seven North St. Louis neighborhoods are helping plan a new greenway. As St. Louis Public Radio's Corinne Ruff reports, it's along an old streetcar route. Decades ago, the Hodemont Tracks was a three and a half mile streetcar route that ran east-west from Grand Center to the West End. But these days, on the other side of Lisa Potts's backyard, it just looks like an alley full of potholes. She's one of several community leaders working with Great Rivers Greenway to get residents involved in what it could look like a few years from now. Potts can already picture kids meeting up to skateboard together and entrepreneurs setting up pop-up shops to sell t-shirts and smoothies. This to me is a catalyst for growth and revitalization and neighborhood pride and neighbors getting to know one another. Potts says the most important thing is that residents get a say in the process. She's urging more people to weigh in before they roll out the design plan later this year. I'm Corinne Ruff, St. Louis Public Radio. It's morel mushroom hunting season in much of the Midwest. Melissa Rosales reports people are scouring river bottoms to find the hollow, sponge-like, edible mushrooms. Omaha Public School teacher Christy Jones grew up hunting morel mushrooms with her father, Phil Finch. 
Right when the lilacs bloom, she was used to getting a phone call from her dad to talk about the season. But this year was different. Her dad was sick with COVID-19 when he died from a heart attack. He passed February 24th, so the last time we actually got to mushroom hunt together was last spring. Wendy Porter steps over a log and ruffles up leaves on the ground with a stick. Oh, that one! Porter and her father are hunting morel mushrooms near the Missouri River. The 51-year-old Nebraskan has been hunting them for 30 years. She's seen some Facebook groups for morel mushroom hunting in Missouri, but not one for Nebraska. So she started her own. And to my surprise, people were wanting to join left and right. And I mean, daily, I get probably 20, 25 people wanting to join. It's pretty cool. The group now has more than 2,500 members. But the last two springs haven't been good seasons because of flooding. Morel hunting is absolutely terrible because the land just gets wiped from the flooding we had a couple of years ago. And so it's not good hunting the year after a flood. Tersh Kepler is a morel mushroom hunting expert. But right now we're in a, a perfect time two years after the flood. So I, I predict this is going to be a really good year. Kepler calls it an adult treasure hunt. And like any good treasure hunt, there's a lot of secrecy. The one thing a morel hunter will never do is tell people exactly where they're going. They're worried about people finding their secret spot and getting their mushrooms. Morels are really hard to find because they need very specific conditions to grow. The ground temperatures need to be between 55 and 60 degrees, and they only grow near freshly dead trees that still have a lot of bark on them. What makes them so popular is the fact that no one has been able to figure out how to commercially grow them yet. So they're usually in season, depending on where you live, for about six weeks out of the year. Kepler says morel mushroom hunting is extremely popular. Hunters can sell the mushrooms for as much as $40 a pound, maybe even more when the season ends. Greg Wagner with the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission says hundreds of people hunt morels in their state parks, but they're not supposed to sell them. The appeal for people to go out and hunt morel mushrooms is the fantastic taste of them. There's nothing that tastes as earthy and peanutty as these morel mushrooms. Wagner enjoys them fried in butter and garlic. Christy Jones likes them fried too. A few weeks ago, she went hunting with her sons and nephew for the first time without her father. They had been hunting for nearly an hour and almost gave up. And I don't know, I just kind of stopped and looked down and I saw one and I just looked at Matthew, my son, and I looked down and I said, thanks, Dad. And then there were about nine more right around that one. And I just really felt Dad there going, here you go, find the cluster. Joan says it's bittersweet to hunt without her dad, but she'll never give it up. And I know my boys are planning to pass it down when they have kids. It'll just be a tradition that continues in our family. And I'm sure they'll tell stories to their kids about their grandpa. Jones encourages hunters to enjoy the time in nature and the peace and quiet, whether or not they find anything. For Harvest Public Media, I'm Melissa Rosales. Harvest Public Media reports on agriculture in collaboration with St. Louis Public Radio and other public media outlets throughout the Midwest. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com.